Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Mission to Mars Student Challenge for Summer Camps, Design Your Spacecraft Staff Training. For those of you who are working in after school or out of school time programs right now, thanks for carving time out of your busy day to uh, be with us today. My name is Oda Lutz. I work at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, and I have with me today my colleague Brandon Rodriguez, and we will be bringing you a couple of fun activities. I hope you have uh, your materials with you. These, uh, these materials are uh, not exactly necessary today. You could watch, but it's more fun if you, if you follow along. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of polling and find out a little bit about you. We'd like to know what grade levels the youth are in your program. Feel free to select more than one grade band. Also, what kind of program are you running this summer? Is it in person or is it a virtual or at home program? Or is it a little bit of both, a kind of a hybrid? Um, also, what's your experience in delivering STEM activities? Uh, have, you, have you done quite a bit before and you're, you're a, a, an old expert, and you know more than lots of us and you could give us advice? <laughs> or are you just starting out and you're thinking, hey, this, this might be fun and it might be scary. Let us know where you are on that. And then also, I'd like to know if you've joined us uh, before for any of our trainings. Uh, we've had three trainings so far for this. And um, whether you've joined us live or have watched the recording, we'd like to know that. Um, and then if this is your first training, welcome. We'll try to catch you up a little bit to the general ideas, but um, we're really happy to have you here, whatever your level of experience with us in trainings is. So I'll give you a couple more minutes on this on this poll, and then we'll we'll get moving. It, it helps us to know what grade levels you're at and what kind of programs you're you're offering this summer because then we can give you more tips uh, that are relevant to what you're doing. So I'm seeing quite a nice spread here. So I'm going to end the poll and share results. So looks like we have a pretty even distribution, a few more in the middle grades, but um, folks all over the map, which is wonderful. Uh, the activities we're doing today will be um, suitable for any grade level that you can kind of scale up, scale down, help the little ones a little more and let the older kids do uh, a little more of their, their own thing. Um, looks like we have quite a few people doing an, a virtual or at home summer camp. Those are gonna be fun and exciting and for some of us kind of new. Um, and this, uh, this, this kind of weird situation we're in where some folks are at home isolating and some folks are doing um, remote, it, are doing in person, it's, it's kind of a, a, a challenge for y'all and, and we understand that. We hope we'll be able to help you out a little bit. Um, and uh, experience, all right, it looks like we have a lot of first timers. This is awesome. Uh, we design our activities so that anyone who is just excited about working with kids can pick them up and, and get rolling and have a, a really fun time doing some STEM. Um, those of you who have more experience, wonderful, feel free to chime in. Uh, you can chime in on the Q&A, even if it's not a question, you can just give us uh, some feedback there. Um, and also it looks like most of you are on your first training with us, so welcome. And for those of you who have watched or participated with us before, thank you. We're really happy to have you returning. This is, this is exciting. All right, so one more reminder that if you are an adult staff member of an after school or out of school time program, this training is for you. Settle in and be ready to have fun with us. If you are an, a student, either your programs will be this summer. So. Uh, you should probably log off if you're a student right now. We're gonna be talking, talking educator stuff. So, all right. The big idea here is we are, with the Mission to Mars Student Challenge, we're leading students in designing and building a Mission to Mars. We have a whole education plan for you. I'm gonna run you through this website a little bit later, 
Um, but uh, go.nasa.gov slash Mars dash challenge is where you're gonna find all the good stuff. Our uh, goals are to engage youth all over the US in our territories and in fact, all over the world if, if folks are interested. Uh, we are especially focused on our underserved communities. Um, Brandon and I both taught in, um, in underserved schools and we actually both know from personal experience what it's like to grow up in a not privileged environment. And so uh, we try to help you out with, uh, with materials that are easy to come by and such. Uh, most of you know that we landed on Mars in February and kids are pretty excited about that. So the, uh, uh, as we do as educators, we try to capture anything they're excited about and, uh, and teach them something. So that's the gig here. Um, looks like uh, we, are, we have a seven week plan. Um, things for little kids, middle school kids and high school kids. Um, as you are participating right now, a couple, a series of one hour webinars, April through June to show you kind of how to do some of these activities. And then in June and July, we will have subject matter expert talks um, and Q and A for your youth. So that's, those are the student programs I was talking about. Um, if you wanna mark your calendars, you see that today we are at Design Your Spacecraft. Uh, the uh, next session will be on surface operations, uh, sample handling after that. And then July 15th was when we want you to come back and share with us what you are doing with your students during the summer because we, we like to learn from you. And for your youth, you see the, the dates, uh, the times are listed on the website that you are familiar with. So what does it take to do these uh, STEM enrichment activities we're talking about? Things that you already have, like naturally, you probably are pretty enthusiastic about working with kids. Um, most of you are more crafty than I am. I am not a crafty person. I, my hat is off to those of you who are crafty. <laughs> um, and it's kind of handy to, to have people who are, who are adept at such things. But even if you're somebody like me who's not crafty, seriously, it's, you can do this stuff. Um, you like to move around. You don't like those kids to be sitting in one little spot. We like them to get up and be doing things. Um, you you want to learn something, not just your kids, but you want to learn something. We expect that you're learning alongside the kids. Uh, that's part of the fun. And it's also a really good lesson for the kids to learn that adults are learning too. It's not like we just went to school and we now know everything, right? We, we actually learn as we go along. Uh, we work with off-the-shelf materials so that we can have pretty equal access, uh, things like, you know, cardboard, <laughs> cardboard, tape, paper. Um, and of course, keeping in mind safety, um, it's always important that, you know, the, you know, the usual safety stuff, not too sharp scissors for the little kids, um, anything that's going to be flying through the air, watch their eyes, um, wear safety glasses when necessary. So just keep an eye on, on them, keeping them safe, because that's, of course, number one. All right, so today you had a, an email that had some materials. Um, I'd like to know whether you have those materials handy with you today. So please answer my poll. Do you have your materials with you for today's activities? Yes, I've got them. No, but I can get them in under two minutes. Or, nah, I'm just going to watch you today. So take a couple minutes to... Uh, review the materials that are on the screen that gives you an idea of what's what's required. All right, looks like a bunch of you have your materials, fantastic. And those of you, a couple of you who can get them in under two minutes, I'm going to encourage you to do that right now. Um, I'm going to uh, review the challenge website and that'll give you a chance to uh, to grab those materials if you if you don't have them. So here's the, here are those results for everyone to see. Um, and those of you who are going to watch right now, perfectly fine. Um, I know oftentimes we multitask during these sorts of events and we can uh, pick up things that we, we can do in the future. And trust me, you don't absolutely have to do it with us. You can uh, do it later on your own. I would encourage you to do it, be, to do these activities yourself um, before doing them with students because 
uh, it's always a good idea to see what might be some pitfalls if you're if you're doing them yourself. All right, we uh, will go on here, and this uh, this is the link to the challenge website. We're going to pop over there, and I'm going to show you quickly what this website looks like. So the Mission to Mars Student Challenge has uh, a number of pieces to it. And you can see the pieces here. We have education plans, expert talks, a student showcase where you'll be able to share your student work, uh, additional resources, and some FAQs. The, the big meat of the issue though here are these education plans. So hopefully you've had a chance to look at these in, if you have been around with us for a few weeks. If you haven't, uh, this is your, your time to take a look. We already did learn about Mars and plan, plan your mission. And this week is design your spacecraft. So I'm gonna go to design and you'll see each of these weekly themes has a little discussion about the mission this week some tips for the week about improvising materials and, and ideas for managing in the classroom. There's also a great little video. Each week we had one of my colleagues, Lyle Tavernier did interviews with different subject matter experts. So like this week in designing your spacecraft, we talked to a mechatronics engineer and asked him, how do you design a spacecraft? What are some of the important things you are considering when designing a spacecraft? Um, if you scroll down further, uh, you'll see the Design Your Spacecraft newsletter. This is a, a newsletter that is, is nicely designed by our web designer who did a beautiful job and gives you some tips for the week, also links to all the resources. And there's a couple ways you can access activities. You can go through these links, Design Your Spacecraft Activities for Students, um, for Educators, or you can scroll down here where it says This Week's Lessons and Activities. There are 20 of them. And you click to expand, it will show you all of them. Now, something I noticed this morning, and this is happening on our website, we're having a little bit of website trouble here and there, is that our, our grade sorting isn't working very well. So normally you can click on this and see, you can go to K2. Well, it's just showing two activities that's not accurate, there's a whole lot more. <laughs> if you go to 3.5, you'll see there's actually a K2 lesson showing up in the 3.5. So we're gonna get that fixed shortly, but it's important uh, for you to be able to sort by grade level, we understand that. So we will get that fixed. But in the meantime, I'd suggest you go with all. And uh, you can see there's a whole bunch of different things for your little kids who are working with shapes. Uh, we have a 10 gram rover, uh, for kids who want to challenge themselves to build a robotic arm out of standard craft materials, whatever they have around the house, there's, there's a robotic arm challenge. We have some more of our Mars in a Minute videos. Um, today, we're gonna be talking about the Mars helicopter. So we'll be doing make a Mars, paper Mars helicopter. Notice that this looks like duplicate, but it's not. One of them is an educator guide, one of them is a student project. And I'll show you how that looks. If you go to the educator guide, there is a link to the student project. So we'll get there in a second. But for those of you who need to align with uh, next generation science standards or common core state standards for mathematics, those standards are listed here for you because as an educator, some of us care about that. Um, gives you an overview of the activity, any downloads, materials you need. And then tips for management. So there's also tips for remote instruction, um, some background information. So in case you are not a Mars helicopter specialist, we uh, give you some background on the Mars helicopter. Then we give you procedures to follow. We expect, by the way, that you uh, improvise. So do whatever works for your, uh, for your students. So these are suggested procedures. We have some video clips so on and so forth. And then when you get to the bottom, we just have some questions for discussion, some suggested assessment, and some extensions. Now, I'm gonna zip back up to the top because remember I said we'd get back to the student project. So this page is for you, the educator, but when you go to the student project, you get a page that you could refer your students to. So if, especially if you're working remotely, 
Um, maybe you want to give this assignment and you have a student who misses the day, or just maybe you want them to have a reference for doing it at home later. This is a step-by-step. A -step. We have a, a video tutorial, and so you can watch the video tutorial. And then the, we just have step-by-step -step instructions. And I'm gonna go through these with you today. So, uh, so we'll have those, uh, you'll see how we do it just kind of as a demonstration, but if this is something you want kids to do on their own, we have some pretty good uh, um, instructions. All right, so today, as I mentioned, we're going to design our spacecraft. Um, now, last week, for those of you who are with us, uh, we played Mars Bound and you chose to do a rover on the surface of Mars. So um, we were thinking about what do we want to accomplish? And we were picking our, our science instruments for what we want to accomplish. Well, now it's time to actually build that rover. Um, now, for some of you, you're like, okay, building a rover might be a little like scary sounding. So we have a couple of different versions of building a rover, but we also have the helicopter. Um, we, uh, we have this helicopter that went to Mars with the, uh, with the Perseverance rover. And um, this, is, this is a helicopter activity in case you need that link. It's, uh, we'll get to, to the activity here in a second. Um, this uh, helicopter was deployed from the belly of the Perseverance rover. So Perseverance landed in this big flash of, of parachutes and retro rockets and landed and got itself all set up. And then it deployed this helicopter. You can see it kind of coming down from the belly there. And once the helicopter was deployed onto the surface and detached from the rover, the rover drove away and left the helicopter on the surface. And then from a distance, we watched the helicopter try to perform the very first powered flight on another planet. In the lower left of the screen, you can see the Ingenuity helicopter taking off, flying straight up, and then check this out, flying off into the distance. And this is super cool because we've never flown on Mars before. We've never had controlled powered flight on any other planet. So we didn't even know if this was gonna work. We did a whole lot of laboratory testing, but you can never really test like everything in the lab. You are still hoping when you get there that every, nothing broke on the way, nothing broke when we were deploying. Um, and also when something flies off out of our range of vision, we're like, is it, is it gonna come back? Well, yeah, this one did come back. So this was the third flight of Ingenuity and it went just beautifully. So we had two more flights after that and we're considering a sixth flight. So um, tune in for that. It's kind of a, a neat thing to watch. All right, so now for the fun stuff. You have a, uh, a piece of paper, I hope. If you did not print it out, it's really okay. Like I know most people don't have printers at home. And on my team at JPL, some of us have printers and some of us don't. And in my case, some days I run out of ink and so my printer doesn't work even though I have one. Um, if you don't have a printer or your students don't have a printer, just take a piece of paper like a piece of white paper or any kind of paper you can kind of see through, hold it up to the screen, like place it on the screen and lightly trace over the, the template. That's all you really need to do. Um, and then you too will have your own, um, you'll, you'll have your own uh, um, template even though you didn't print it out. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to, um, try to uh, see if I can spotlight to myself here. Um, the uh, leading you through this is gonna be, is gonna be fun and uh, kind of exciting and a little bit scary because um, sometimes things go well when you try them live and sometimes they don't. As <laughs> Brandon laughs, because Brandon knows we've tried this before. And, and most of the time it goes well, which is awesome. Um, but other times it does not. And I'm not seeming to have, um, let's see, here we go. All right. I think you guys should all be seeing me quite large, hopefully. Um, if not, at least you're seeing me in a corner. Um, 
<laughs> All right, Brandon, can you tell me if I, uh, if I look big on your screen? Yeah, okay, good deal. All right, so we all have a template or something similar and a pair of scissors. Now on this template, I'd like you to cut the dashed lines. So you see there's dashed lines all the way around the outside. So I would cut one of these out first, cut all the dashed lines. And you don't have to be perfect at this, okay? Um, I was one of those kids when I was learning how to use scissors that I wanted to be like super duper careful and you know get it exactly right. And I'd get all upset with myself if I didn't cut on the lines just right. And then I grew up and I realized it doesn't really matter if you're perfect on the lines. Just kind of cut on the lines. And if you're close enough, you're close enough. I mean, we joke, this isn't rocket science, right? Um, but truly, if you make a little mistake too, it's just not a big deal. So remember cutting dashed lines only. And Brandon's got his handy dandy little uh, camera there that's helpful, shows up close. And you can uh, see that we're, we're cutting them out. So you get something like this. Okay, now there are three more dashed lines to cut out. So while we're cutting, I'm gonna have you go ahead and, and cut all three of those dashed lines. There's, there's this one at the top, cut down and stop right there. And then there's one on the left and the right and just cut those short little lines. And then we'll be done with your scissors for a moment. You can set those aside once you get those three interior dashed lines cut. And then the real fun begins. Okay, so you have these cut here, you have these cut here. All right, first thing you're gonna do is you're going to fold these flaps A and B down one in one direction, like one towards you and one away from you. And it doesn't matter which one, it, I, it doesn't matter. Go which way, whichever way. Now I'm gonna fold on this nice little line because you know, I'm a rule follower, but if you don't like to fold on lines, that's okay too. If you wanna fold it straight across, cause you notice it's kind of slanted. If you wanna fold it straight across, do that. If you wanna fold it even more slanted, do that. But what you're doing is you're making the propellers of this helicopter. So remember one goes in one direction and the other goes in the other direction. So it kind of makes a, like a, a T sort of thing. Um, so you get it like that. And then now you got these nice little floppy ridders. Then you take uh, these other flaps. This, these are labeled X and Y. And you're going to fold those. Now, these fold in the same direction. It doesn't matter if you fold them back or you fold them both forward. Just fold them in the same direction along the solid line. I'm, I'm going to fold mine back, but, you know, it doesn't matter. Just do it. And truthfully, if you, if you were to fold one one way and one the other, it's also fine. There's so many options with this activity, and it's really quite fun for kids to not feel like they're so restrained with some like super duper, you must do it this way instruction set. So it kind of looks like this at this point and kind of a, another T. <laughs> and then you have this little Z at the bottom. This Z is the flap that you're gonna fold up. And again, it doesn't matter which way you fold it, just fold it up along the line. And then you have something that looks like this. Now, now my Y is on top, your X might be on top. It doesn't matter. Maybe nothing's on top because you folded it the other way. Seriously, you just got to have something that kind of looks like this. Now, this is your paper helicopter. This is your first design. Money back guarantee, it is probably not your best design. This is just a starting point, okay? And part of the engineering design process is we start with something and then we redesign to make it better. Okay, so what I want you to do is if you if you are someplace you can stand up, great. Um, I don't want to go out of screen, so I'm not going to stand up. But I want you to, yeah, Brandon can probably stand up. Huh? He's got a he's got a little better uh, uh, camera view there. And then I want you to just hold it, yeah, you know, somewhere in the in the middle or toward the toward the top doesn't matter. It's wherever you got a good a good uh, hold on that. And then I want you to drop it. 
Now, Brandon's is probably gonna show a little better. Um, these, uh, in fact, Brandon, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop this view away, uh, away from me and I'm going to, hold on, spotlight, hold on. Okay, so Brandon's gonna show you a nice drop and voila, and see how it spin, spun nicely on his desk. I mean, Brandon's got this down. He's done this before. <laughs> so this is your nice handy dandy helicopter, right? Um, you can do other things with this helicopter. So for example, um, you, hopefully it worked, it kind of spun. Um, figure out which way it spun. Did it spin as you're looking down on it? Was it clockwise or counterclockwise? And some of you, it will be clockwise and some of you will be counterclockwise. Well, what's the difference? And could you make yours go clockwise if it was going counterclockwise and the reverse? Um, also, could you, uh, could you make it go slower or faster? How might you do that? Now I mentioned uh, in, the, in the materials an optional paperclip. Now you can put the paperclip anywhere you want. Um, I'm gonna suggest putting the paperclip on the bottom so that you actually end up with a little bit more weight on the bottom and then see what happens. If you've got a little more weight, you might imagine that it would go faster. Well, is it gonna fall faster? Or is it gonna spin faster? Is it going to do both? What's it going to do? And I would encourage you to try that out. Just try different things. If you don't have a paper clip, or even if you do, maybe uh, maybe even folding the bottom up again. You know, maybe make that uh, that main body of the helicopter shorter. Does that change anything? And and I'm not going to tell you the answers because I don't know the answers. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm not just like saying I don't know because I'm a teacher. No, really, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Um, Another thing you could do is uh, change change your uh, your rotors. So I mean, these are kind of like chubby, right? Maybe you want skinnier rotors. So um, feel free to trim them down. Um, you could you could you could trim them down like trim them this way, like chop the ends off, or you could make them skinnier. I'm gonna make mine skinnier and see if that makes any difference. Uh, you could train, change, change just one thing at a time. Um, that's one thing with kids. They like to change a million things at once. Ugh, such a bad idea, right? So um, I changed just one of these. I might, uh, if I'm an older student, I might know that I should change both because you, you know, if one of them is, is skinnier than the other, it might, it might throw it off. But if you're a younger student, maybe you should start with that and try that, see what happens. Uh, I would suggest doing some symmetrical cuts though, um, but try different things. Um, if you are into teaching math and you like kids to make connections between uh, what they're doing in, in an engineering design challenge and the mathematics, um, challenge them to count the number of rotations. So depending on where they drop it from, it kind of makes sense to probably you and, and me, that if you drop it from a higher point, it's gonna make more turns than it at the lower point, but how many more? Um, I would encourage you to um, think about how they might count those rotations. Um, probably like watching it and going one, one, two, three, four, five. That's probably not a good idea, right? Because that's not going to happen. <laughs> but a couple of different things. I mean, lots of uh, your young people and even you yourself have a smartphone with video. You could video it and do slow mo playback, or you can uh, attach a, a ribbon. A flat ribbon to this that is straight down with no turns in it. Step on it with your foot, drop it, and then count the uh, the turns in the ribbon. That'll tell you how many times your helicopter turned. Um, if you'd like to graph, measure the point at which you dropped this, the height, and then count the rotations and do the height you dropped at and the rotations. Drop it at a different height, height you dropped at and rotations. So that is the, um, the very cool um, uh, paper helicopter. Um, so that's kind of a, a quickie through it. The next thing we're gonna do is this cardboard rover. This turned out to be our most popular activity during the Mission to Mars Student Challenge. And I think it's because all of us were at home 
all of us were ordering things either from the grocery store or from someplace where we shopped at and it came in a cardboard box. So we all have more cardboard than we ever knew what to do with. Um, and really cardboard is your main attraction here. So um, I'm gonna turn this over to my buddy, Brandon, because uh, Brandon is the specialist of the cardboard rover. So Brandon, take it away. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Thanks so much, Oda. Uh, yeah, I, I can't agree enough. I, this is probably my favorite activity on our website. Um, really, I think because not only is it super easy to get all the resources, but it's the best for scaling to a wide audience. So I saw in that first poll that we have teachers from so many different bands, and I've, I've done this and, and worked with teachers who have done this down to fourth grade, and I've done this with juniors and seniors myself. Um, so I just, I love it. I love how, how you can really apply this to any student group. Um, so if I could show you guys just a couple slides to set our stage, let's take a look here. So uh, long before Perseverance was around, we had uh, Curiosity driving and Curiosity is still actively exploring Mars. Um, and when I got to JPL, I, I was really interested to kind of absorb the history of all of the, um, the evolution of so many different rover types over the past few decades. And you can kind of imagine starting back in, in the you know, late 90s with little toaster that could sojourner, um, you can see that you know, so small and mighty, but when you look at like how the wheels have changed, right? just specifically the wheels, obviously the rovers overall have big, big change, but just the wheels in themselves, you can see as we got bigger, some things stayed the same and some things changed quite a bit. So moving from Sojourner to Spirit and Opportunity, some things I noticed were that, you know, six wheels seemed to be the, the, the best answer. I wasn't really sure why. Why six? Why not four like a car we have here on Earth? I knew that one wasn't the answer. Like Mars unicycle was probably not the best option, but, but why six? And even here, I started to see, well, these wheels are a little bit more rounded on the top than the previous ones are flat. And they're, they're a little hollow inside. I thought that was really interesting too. As we move to, to, um, to Curiosity, uh, the wheels kind of had this, this interesting you know, zigzag design. Um, and remember that we're on Mars here, we're not on, on roads. So there's no like tires, right? We don't have uh, a rubber wheels, we have metal wheels. And it was really interesting to me to, to see that how these wheels, in fact, got damaged over time. So while this, you know, Curiosity wheel looks so, so pristine and high tech uh, at, at landing, uh, it eventually starts to look a little bit more like this. So the, the rough terrain of Mars is puncturing these wheels and get to wondering, well, how can I stop that from happening, right? I, once, once my wheels are damaged, I, I'm no longer mobile. So the wheels are, are a, a critical part of being able to make sure that we're exploring Mars for as long as possible. If I kind of show you guys a, a neat toy I have here, the wheels for Perseverance look like this. Uh, so this is a, a, a replica of one of the wheels of, that Perseverance is using. And you can see kind of the same design on the interior, uh, but now instead of these like uh, the, the zigzags, before you got this kind of, kind of soft wave, um, and it's about 40 pounds. You can see it's quite large, about half the size of me. Um, aluminum on the outside, titanium on the inside, uh, very, very strong and light. So this is kind of how we decided from starting from uh, Sojourner all the way through Curiosity, how is this wheel going to survive better? How are we always gonna get just a little bit better and make our iterations? And that's exactly what we're gonna do today with our, with our cardboard rovers. So, for this one, um, there's kind of like a, two different parts, really. The first part is making the body of your rover. And I'm gonna show you guys a, a finished product. I like to have like a finished one. And this, this is by no means what yours has to look like. Um, I, I do a different one every single time. I just, I'm always exploring with other things. But you can see, uh, I've got a, kind of like a body here. I've got a rubber band inside that I can wind up my, my wheels. 
and let go and get some motion there. It's kind of like uh, the old toy cars you had when you were young. You would drag them back and let them go and they would go flying forward. So we're gonna try to make something a little like this, right? To do that, I like to start with the body of my rover. I got a piece of cardboard here. Um, and I just cut a square, but feel free to like explore different shapes. So maybe you wanna make yours kind of um, short and boxy like this one. Or maybe you want like a long skinny one, like a drag racer. I'll do a little something in between. I don't, I don't want it to be this big. So maybe something like this. Feel free to cut any body length you like. I'll go a little small. See if light and speedy is the way. From here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this up into like, like about thirds so that I have the walls. Let's get a nice fold here. That's not quite as symmetric as I'd like, but that's okay. That's okay. A little, a little bit off there. Oof, maybe I'll trim that just a, just a bit. But the, the gist is you want kind of the walls of your, of your rover like that. I, unlike Oda, have not accepted cutting on the lines and making things perfect. And I'm going to have to fix it. All right. That looks pretty good to start. Pretty good to start. And again, like I said, experiment with different shapes. If we all did the same shape, then this would not be really exciting. So um, it's better if we all kind of have different, different places to start with. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put my rear axle on here. And I'm going to do that by just very carefully poking a pencil all the way through both sides, right? I want a strong rear axle. You can use a pencil or a pen or something like that. Uh, but my rubber band's going to go on this. So this has got to be something that can um, hold the force of a rubber band. So like I said, careful, careful. Get a little poke in here. Nice, nice. You can also just use your scissors to also carefully poke a little hole if that makes you more comfortable. I am less likely to hurt myself with a pencil than scissors, but not by much. So there I am so far. I'll give you guys another, another view of this. See right there, looking good. So I've got my little uh, walls of the of the car of my rover here, and I've got a rear axle in between. I'll tell you, for the sake of time, one of the biggest first mistakes that students make, one of the things they they need to re revise first, is that this axle is too tight in the body, and I can already feel that. Like it doesn't really twist easily. And I need it to twist so that my, um, my rubber band can take power to the wheels. So how do I fix that? Uh, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm just gonna kind of loosen this up a little bit. Just give it a little bit of give so that I can turn nice and smooth. Okay, already better. A little, a little bit more. Much better, much better. So give yourself a little test here. Make sure that your pencil turns nice and easy. So far, so good. I feel like we're doing pretty well. All right, next step. For my front axle, I have a little straw. You can use another pencil, anything you'd like. This one doesn't have to be strong, so I'm just gonna use a straw. I also don't need it to be this big, so I'm gonna trim it down a little bit. Me my front axle, and I'm just going to tape it right here to the front. This one I don't I don't need to put it through. Feel free to, of course, please. No wrong ideas here. Just like the helicopter, we're really just kind of, you know, exploring. It's not fun if we already know what to do. So I'm going to put some tape here to keep my front axle in place. Probably give it a second piece. like so. And I'm going to put just little little mints on the on the front for my front wheels here. 
Uh, if you have the candy ones, that's totally fine. But again, teacher pro tip, uh, the candy ones get ants. And we find that out the hard way in our office. So we like the, uh, the, the, the mint ones. Um, so if you're gonna leave supplies in your classroom for the summer, trust me, go with the mints. Cool. Well, I got my front wheels. I got my front axle. I got my rear axle. I'm a little worried about these guys uh, sliding off. So maybe I'm going to secure them really quick. I'm just going to put a little chunk of tape here to block them. Be my little, my little tape lug nuts, if you will. And that's also as much as I know about cars. Cool. These guys stay on now. That feels great. Give you guys a little close-up view and let you guys catch up in case you're feeling we're going behind. Got a little rear axle there. Front axle there. My mints on the front spin nice and easy. That's good. And my pencil in the back also turns very easily. Great. All right, so now the last big step here is I need to get my power source. I'm gonna get this rubber band. I'm gonna take a rubber band, tie it on the back axle here in the rear. And I'm just gonna kind of like hook it onto the front. Now you can do this with a single rubber band stretched. What I did is I tied two rubber bands together. I might not really need it, I could just use like so, if I, if I so wish. Uh, you can use thick rubber bands, thin rubber bands, multiple rubber bands, right? Uh, explore, explore. Um, is, is there too much power, too little power? Do you wanna go fast or do you wanna go slow and steady? Lots of options here. So I'm gonna take my rubber band here and I'm just gonna loop it onto my rear axle. Let me get you a good view of that. Right, so I've got it like this, and I'm just going to kind of pull it through here, like so. All right now, I've got it tied on there. And what should I do with the front? I'm going to take my scissors, I'm going to cut two little slits on the front, nothing big, just enough to kind of hook my rubber band on. like so. Oh, oh, looking good. I'm feeling pretty good about this rover, I'm gonna admit. Some days when I do this, it comes out looking pretty, pretty wonky, but this one I think might go. Okay. So now you can see, and you can maybe test for yourself, make sure that you're, you're feeling confident. If I turn my pencil, I can see my rubber band winds up. And if I let go, oh, doesn't move, doesn't move. This is what I was talking about right at the beginning, right? So if I'm having that problem where the, the rubber band is all wound, but I'm still not seeing the release, that means I need to loosen up this axle a little bit. And like I said, this is the one, this is one of two problems I see the most when kids are making their first design. Fix this up, give it another test. Perfect, there we go, right? So now we're looking good. Now I think we're ready. I hope you guys uh, have managed to follow along. If you're re-watching this, feel free to pause and kind of you know, take your time and catch up and kind of contemplate what, what changes you wanna make. Um, but we're really ready for our final step. And this is again, where you really get to like flex your, your imagination muscles here. So I've also kind of just prepared just two pieces of cardboard. And from these, I want to cut my rear wheels. Uh, so I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm going back to this idea of, you know, curiosity versus perseverance. What, what wheel should I design? What shape is going to give me uh, the kind of rover I'm looking for? And the best part is there's really no, there's no wrong answer here either, right? It's, it's a right tool for the right job kind of thing. So maybe uh, a certain wheel shape will work better on uh, a smooth terrain, whereas another one would work better on carpet. Lots of options. 
Um, so I can tell you the answer is not square. That's probably the only one you want to shy away from. But maybe the best answer isn't perfect circle either. Maybe it won't have enough grip. So I'm going to cut a simple design to start. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Maybe I'm going to make, um, I'll make like an octagon. Make like a stop sign shape. I don't want my wheels to be quite this big, so I'm going to cut them maybe like this. Nothing, nothing fancy. Hopefully, you guys have a have a cooler idea than mine. I just kind of went with with a little octagon. And once I have one, it really makes it easy to kind of keep some symmetry on the other one. I can use it as a as a trace if I would like. So cut my, my second wheel using my first wheel as a template. Um, I got asked recently too, while we're cutting, just another, another pro teacher tip. Why don't you use cardboard wheels on the front and on the back? Um, and the, the reason is just teacher supplies. Uh, it takes more time for me to cut out cardboard squares for my classroom than it does to go to the dollar store and get a big bag of mints. So I cut my, my materials time down significantly by having kids just explore rear wheels instead of having, uh, having to cut cardboard for both wheels. All right, promising, feeling good. So I've got my template cut out. I wanna just secure these onto uh, the back of my rover um, again, you can use your pencil to poke a hole, or you can use your scissors to just kind of careful, careful, put a little hole in the middle. If you're good, you measure where the middle is. If you're bad like me, you don't, and you get wheels that could be problematic. I'm living on the edge today. Like so. And I'm just going to kind of put these guys on here, see what we get. There's one, there's two. Oh, looking pretty good. Um, what I'm gonna do now is, for no reason other than maybe just kind of practiced in this, I'm actually gonna put a piece of tape across the top of this because I don't want it to like open and rub against, I, I don't want friction here, right? So just before I test, I'm gonna kind of close the hood of my, of my rover, if you will just like this. Oh, look at that. Not bad. Give you guys another little close up view and a chance to, to catch up. Looks like I have to secure my hood a little bit here. There we go. I got some wheels on the back. Mm, this one's this one's causing some concern. We'll give it a little test and come back. But I, they do move. That feels pretty good. Not too bad, not too bad for a first shot. All right, so let's do this. Let's give this a little test. I'm gonna put one more piece of tape on here. Maybe clear out this hazardous terrain from my rover. I'm gonna give this a little wind up. And we'll see if, uh, if it works. Nope, nothing, which is absolutely what I expect. Absolutely. This never works the first time. Never, never, never going to work the first time. And that's totally fine. Because again, the game is to look and try to understand, well, where did I, where did I make a mistake? Now, I knew my axle looked good. So I wonder if I pick it up. Oh, then my wheels turn. Then my wheels turn. So it wanted to go, it really did want to go, but for some reason it couldn't go here, right? Cool, well, that gives me a little, a little something to work with, right? Um, I'll, I'll say, again, I mentioned the two things that student face, and I've kind of intentionally built one in here, um, is if your wheels are really loose, your pencil might spin, but your wheels won't, right? So your axle is turning, but if you're not getting any power to your wheels. If that ever happens, real easy fix. You just want to secure your wheel to your axle. 
one's going to kind of tape this guy on there and make sure that when it turns, it turns the wheel with it. Could definitely see that this was looking a little, a little flimsy on the first start. So I'm going to secure this real quick. We'll take another look at the rover up close. See how we feel. Okay, it's looking pretty good, right? Well, a little, a little uh, misaligned here, but that's okay. And you can see on the inside, when I wind this up, my rubber band kind of charges. And when I let go, I should be able to get it to loosen out, right? Neat. Cool. All right, so let's give this another test. I'm gonna give a little test off the ground, make sure I'm good. Oh yeah, oh, a little, little. Oh, I see. I see what I did. Mm -hmm. All about revisions. I'm telling you, as a, as a lab science teacher, I know the value of revising and making time for revision, but it's always the thing we cut first, right? It's always cut for time, even though it's so important. So having a chance to make some changes and giving it another shot, this is where kids really, really learn the most. All right, I wound it this way, so it should go this way this time. Looks like I need to give it a little boost. Oh, still not so good. Oh, there we go, a little bit at the end. Nice, nice, okay. So I'm gonna make one last change really, really quick. I think my wheels are not able to flip over because I made the steps a little too sharp. This is gonna be fun to clean up off my desk later. I'm gonna add some smaller edges. Who knows? We'll give it one last shot. Ready? Moment of truth. Nailed it. Nice Third time's the charm. <laughs> so um, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys are able to follow along. I mean, again, you can see that the, you know, the real excitement just comes from, you know, trying, trying new things and just kind of testing and improving. Um, letting students group think, right? There's no cheating. Like let students talk to other groups and see what they're doing and take their ideas and, and work together. Um, I think that's really helpful. And, and lastly, I'll mention, like I said, I do this with my high school students as well. And if you're wondering, well, how do you, how do you make this at a high school level? This is a nice middle school we did today. Um, I encourage you to, if, especially if you teach physics, um, this is a great example for um, conservation of energy. So I have my students figure out how much kinetic energy they got out of their rover uh, as it crosses their table. And then they have to calculate the strength of their rubber band, uh, knowing that kinetic energy is uh, coming from elastic potential energy. And of course, smart students will say, oh, but that's not truly conserved because I lost some of the friction and so forth. Um, so it's kind of a fun, a fun physics experiment as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'll turn it back over to Oda and let her uh, finish us out for the day. Thanks so much, Brandon. I, I love what you said about giving kids time for revisions. And I remember as a classroom teacher, that was one of the things I struggled with the most because you just, you always have too much to teach and not enough time. And that's one of the things I envy about the youth groups. Uh, Y'all have a little more flexibility in what you're doing and a little more time. And so I, I like that you're able to, to give kids an opportunity to to do revisions and to build another one. Uh, that's one of the things too, if you look at the materials Brandon was using, you know, even if you don't have little candy mints, you know, make your own front wheels. Um, there are even options, if you don't have a straw, there, there are other options for the front. Um, it, you see that the straw, we didn't use the inside there at all, we just used the outside. So if you had two pencils, you could do it. Um, and so when you're talking about materials, you're not looking at things that you have to worry about kids wasting or anything of the sort, because, 
it's it's just uh, it's it's same thing that you're doing with other materials where you can give kids as much latitude as you want. I mean, cardboard is cardboard, right? It's recyclable and there's plenty of it out there. If you don't have any, it's you're ready. I'm sure the neighborhood dumpster has some. As a, as a teacher, I was a, a professional dumpster diver of sorts. <laughs> and um, I, I know that uh, getting scrap material is really, really handy. Um, before we go, I wanna point you to my colleague Leslie's uh, blog. Leslie is one of our informal education specialists and she writes a blog for Boost Cafe several times a year and covers a variety of different lessons and activities that are available and suitable for out of school time. So tune in there. And then uh, those of you who have been asking questions in the Q&A, my colleague Amelia has been answering those for you. Amelia, what can you tell us about the Museum and Informal Education Alliance? Hey, great. Thanks. Uh, thanks for throwing it to me. So yeah, the Museum and Informal Education Alliance is designed for informal educators, of which you all are. It is a free community of practice, just like everything NASA offers, and we invite you to join. Um, as part of being registered for the series, uh, you have received or will receive the next time I send it out. Uh, an invitation to join, or you can just check us out um, on the uh, um, the link there, which I also put in the chat. But we um, again are designed for informal educators. We're providing uh, support and helping you find the NASA resources that are most useful to you. Fantastic! And I I have to give just my own plug for the Museum and Informal Education Alliance. They have so many good resources. Um, if you want to learn more about NASA missions, those, um, those, uh, those trainings um, and briefings are really, really helpful. I attend them myself to learn. So uh, consider joining the Museum Informal Education Alliance. They uh, send you really good emails that uh, always have good relevant information. And with that, I uh, want to thank you again for the work you do with our youth. Uh, you have your hands full, we know that, and we absolutely respect the work that you do. Uh, we hope that you will uh, go and check out the Mars Challenge and uh, join us next time for our next training. Now, our next training, we're gonna go ahead and skip uh, what it appears to be skipping a couple of, of weeks in the challenge. We're gonna go ahead and go to surface operations. That's because we did launch and landing as our very first out of school time training back in January. So you can go to our YouTube channel and look for that. And if you haven't watched it yet, take a look at the how to build a, a rocket and how to do a lander. And uh, then join us next time for the uh, surface operations. Again, thanks for the work you do. And we will see you next time.